Crazy Killing Machine Network and KFPL presents the third and fourth place match pitting Uglik versus Fierza. Fierza comes to us from Australia representing Team Reap Out from Group D and his three decks of choice were Opal, No Eye, and Sephora and for this event he has decided to play Opal. Opal is loaded with efficiency as you can see, uh, lots of ways to draw cards and bring cards to the table through the three mothers, the three slob sloppy lab works, library axis, lots of redundancy in logos so you see a lot of the similar logos every turn. The untamed is dangerous with its ability to burst with the full moon, the flaxias, the taligas, uh, witch of the eye for some recursion and the nature's call to empower them all and then shadows has a too much to protect and ways to get back a little bit of amber here and there with bait and switch, nerve blasts, uh, dusk runner, and a snake life to boot. We now move on to Ugluk from Team Sanctimonious representing Canada out of Group B. Ugluk's three decks are Takeo, Nicholas, and Vivian. And in today's matchup, he has decided to bring Takeo. Takeo makes his li its living on board control and being able to control the board uh, on different levels. In this matchup, I think Takeo is going to have a little bit of an issue with the amount of speed that he's seeing on the other side. But there is some tricky uh, plays in Shadows with Heist Knight and Bren the Fanatic in Life for a Life. So there's ways to steal that bursty amber and then there's ways to just control the board using his Dis and Brobnar. So it will be an interesting matchup between these two decks. So let's get into it as uh, the match is ready to begin. And we see in Fierza's opening hand he has two mothers, um, which has to be at least a good start with the Flaxia to boot. So there's a, a bit of a burst right out the gate. And then we see in Ugluk's hands he has three shadows, four shadows cards and uh, two Probnar cards. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. It could be a keeper, but most likely going to be a, a pitch. But it does give him an instant answer, like with the Oubliette for some of the things maybe he doesn't want to see on the other side. But we'll see. I, I think he's going to opt to take a mulligan here. But we'll see what happens as they ponder the beginning of the game. All right, so the, so Fierza does reshuffle his uh, two mothers. Comes back with a mother and a library axis, a bait and switch, a full moon, and a viger. It was interesting. So he plays the mother. Uglik does hold on to his uh, shadow's turn because he gets to play four cards and drive through his deck. So he continues to just make his move here and uh, push the game forward. It's at Gamki, and then we see the Bone Rot Venom landing on the mother, and Fierza comes right on back into shadows. He plays his bait and switch for no value, plays the shadow self and he's getting more value onto that mother with the uh, ring of invisibility. And now the coward's end comes into play, there's the bingo bang bang and a groggins to uh, the board to help to try to keep the board smaller and more concise and so he follows up with a logos turn and two mothers. Um, good timing there for that and then he's able to start a fogify so there's not going to be any fightings on those moms nobody's hitting their his mom and he moves forward with a phase shift a lot or a sloppy lab work sorry and uh gets more card advantage off of it sloppy lab work is a great card and so now we see fierza frantically go right back into this and drops a dust imp and uh abiding irons the game is moving fast these guys know what they're doing with their decks they are playing breakneck speed right now as uh, the amber counts are four to four and uh, we're, we're gonna start to see some uh, advantage be pushed here towards the first key so the turn goes back to Fierza and uh, we look to see what he's gonna choose to do with a hand pretty loaded with uh, fun things to do so we'll see what happens as he has a pretty good amount of shadows decent amount of uh, untamed to bring to the board and a Small bit of Logos, but he's going to go for Logos here. He's going to play the Sloppy Lab work, it looks like, to probably get some value into his archive. Um, get that second mother into play. Uh, there we go. 
and uh, a library of Babel for even more speed. Uh, speed is a drug, and he is living it. So there we go with the uh, big fat hand and building some of his archives up. So we'll be uh, he'll be putting a lot of pressure on this game early, which is where he probably wants to be. So we see Ugla come back in Dece, and uh, he does add a library to the table. Uses his imp to reap just to get to six as well, so they're both on six. Uh, the key will be forged by Fierza here, and he'll go into shadows to uh, put a dent in the game plan here. Be curious to see what happens here. I assume that there will be a Snecklifter play into a Relentless Whisper. Nope, he's going to use the Relentless Whisper on the Groggins. Steals the Dominator Bobble. That's pretty good. Going to get some value there. Decides to discard the Poison Wave because he doesn't want to add damage to his own. But here comes the second uh, Coward Zen. So both the big board clears have now been pulled out by the uh, the logo board states of, uh, of Fierza. So now he's got to feel a little bit safer going for the... Uh, the Witch of the Eye here is he's able to clear the board with the Lost in the Woods, get his value from his Vigors. Now he gets to play a Taliga, a, a Niffle Queen, and a Witch of the Eye for a lot of uh, a lot of stick and a lot of value here. So that's pretty crazy as uh, they move forward here. So you see that uh, Ugla quickly responds with a <laughs> Dis turn, plays a Dust Imp, and passes back basically shadow of this as well so that he can't use the uh, witch of the eye just yet but the flaxia value comes in here there's a nature's call it's getting ugly and ugla concedes as he knows he's far behind and not going to catch up to the speed that uh fear is bringing to the table in this matchup and we see opal uh make short work of um techio in this first round so We'll switch up the decks, we'll get right back on it, and we'll see if uh, there's a difference in round two. All right, it looks like we are ready for round two here as uh, we switch up decks, and Opal is now in the hands of Ugluk, and Fierza takes on the task of piloting Takio. So we will see what goes on here as uh, U Ugluk has decided to go first. Um, Mulligans his hand right away uh, into a full moon Taliga Snecklifter uh, nerve nerve blast and a couple of logos cards and he starts off with Taliga which is a good start but Oubliette comes right away and uh, answers the Taliga for good and here comes Gangi and a hideout hole hideaway hole all right so now the game is moving fast and furious again like this, these games are not taking time man like uh nerve blast to basically come out pulls out the snack lifter to take away that hideaway hole um now the war chest hits and the bingle bangle comes out with a stun on the snack lifter as these guys are, are flying through these like they've they, they've been practicing and i think they might have uh they know what they're getting into here um so we got the mother but uh the card advantage starting to start to uh, get online here for Ugluk with uh, Opal, which we saw last game was super efficient and put the game away. But we do look at the other side and we see a very stacked dis lineup in fire in fires as hand. So um, we didn't see anything like that for Ugluk last game. He stayed pretty diverse in his draw, like in uh, two to three cards at a time. Um, his biggest turn was his four card shadows turn on the first round, but. Uh, We'll see if maybe this deck can do a little bit different if it uh, draws heavy and lets him play more cards at a time. Let's see how that goes. So there's the Shadow of Dis to turn off the, uh, the cards for next turn. Oranto has made his way to the table. And we see him draw into three Shadows cards, one being a Brun the Fanatic and, a Mi and another one being Miasma. He has one other uh, discard here and he has three um, nice... Uh, Brobnar cards with uh, Smith, Cowfine, and uh, Take That Smarty Pants. <laughs> so the Take That Smarty Pants might have actually might actually get some work here. So that's interesting. But let's see what comes out of that. 
So we see it Shadow's turn. Yep, Shadow's by Ugluk, and he's coming out Shadow Selfin and just trying to make up some ground here as he gets to six. He's the first one to six in this game, so it's not a surprise. Opal is doing what Opal does. And he has a Ring of Invisibility on the Mother, which is great, and a Dusk Runner on the uh, the Ganymede Archivist, which is uh, basically spreading out his targets, right? Like uh, protecting his mother a little bit, making her less of a target with the evasion, and like uh, saying, hey, look, this Ganymede is important. You better get rid of him or he's going to do some damage to you, so... Well spread out. That's a good way to use your, your upgrades when you're when you're looking at the board. Now you see the uh, the plays here by Fierza. He comes out, drops that cow fine. He's trying to get some value out of it. Does play the Smith, pops himself up to seven Amber, which is uh, going to put him on a key if uh, he can get there. And he did take Ugluk off. So we are seeing Ugluk now fight fight his way back up to six take away some of that amber on the other side bringing him back down to six will he be able to get him off key does he want to get him off key sometimes you give up that key just to get some value but we'll see what happens here because if he really wanted to take him off key he could have went shadows and and Took the too much to protect with the relentless whispers, but that probably doesn't have as much value as going into a stronger uh, logos turn here and uh, getting himself in position. So, but he still does have the ability to take one off because he can use the relentless whispers still with the uh, phase shift from logos. So, we'll see what happens here as uh, he's thinking about what he wants to do, and uh, we patiently wait to see what he chooses to do with it. So there's the phase shift. Uh, plays the Niffle Ape. Interesting. Does get all the cards out of his hand with the sloppy lab work. So there's value there, but he does give up the first key. He's doing this out of out, off of tempo, I guess. He wants to just get more value. And he feels that uh, his pace is going to get faster than fears us because he knows that his deck has a little bit of an issue with the speed of things so we'll see what happens here as uh, these turns progress you see uh, fears are going into a this turn this 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 turn threatening a binding iron and a looks like a banish there's the library of the damned His hand doesn't look like it's going to anywhere too fast. It does have the Miasma at least, so that does help. Uh, the Ortanu is online to do some damage, but uh, we can see in uh, Ugluk's hand that he has a crazy untamed suite ready to go. And uh, here it comes, and he's going to create a lot of value here, I think, in this in this upcoming turn. The Nature's Call is in hand as well, so like there's going to be some some fun here. Nocturnal Maneuvers, takes those down. Now he has the Nature's Call if he needs it as well. Next, clears the table. Now you can bring back the fresh Niffle, two fresh Niffle Apes and a uh, Witch of the Eye. And this could be the kind of pace that's going to just end this game, end this turn, end this game. And uh, I don't think it's, it's going to be hard for Takio to, to meet this now because both of his uh, Takio's uh, Coward's Ends are gone. So that may have been, that may have been last game that the yeah the coward's ends were gone so don't remember but we don't see them in hand so we do see more Brobnar coming to the table which is not going to help if Uglug pushes here so this this is pretty close to over at this point as uh, looking at the two hands there's going to be a lot of issues on the uh,
on the board for uh, Fierza to really be able to bring anything back. So, oh, there he goes. He does have the life for a life in the Brend, so that will help him a little bit, but I don't think that's going to bring him back to this game. I don't think that's enough, as uh, there's already 17 Amber across the board from him. So, that's enough to make two keys and some change. Here comes the game key and the, the Scowly Caper. A very fun card from AOA. Very underrated. Can be very annoying. It does pretty good work. But uh, Ugluk does forge his second key and he's already at 8 Amber and he's looking to push forward. And he goes into Logos and here comes craziness again. And here comes the two mothers and there comes a fear as a concede. So with that said, we move on to the chain bidding. Are you ready? Let's bid some chains! So here we are as we see Ugluk is setting his nine chains for this final game to see if he can overcome the uh, power that is Takio with the power that is Opal. Opal has been very dominant, so maybe nine chains isn't too far off, but we see him come in with a mother quickly, um, and we'll see Fierza start his turn off with a lot of Brobnar. It's the best start I've seen for Takio yet, so um, as far as the board controlling goes, plus a smithy to get a little bit of speed and advantage out. So uh, strong start for Fierza here, as, as, as strong as you could hope for with Takio, I think. He uh, has the Brahmo the Grogans, and the Bingle Bangle out there. Um, but we do see the Vigor quickly come back in, in, in things. So quickly the Amber Counts are starting to move as the uh, the game looks a lot different. But now we see uh, the value of Opal like start to stack in Ugluk's hand as he has two Sloppy Lab Works, a Mother, and a Gandymene Archeo Arche Archivist. And we see Fierza taking his time as he thinks about where he wants to go with this turn. Uh, it looks like he's heading back into Brobnar. Seems like the right choice. He can play fights with the Cowfine. Or the Grogan, sorry. Going value city here with the Brobnar, fighting and reaping, trying to get things working. Gets that war chest online, gets to six first. Now, this is the first game that we've seen Takio hit six before uh, Opal, so we'll see how this is responded to by Ugluk as we move forward. And we see a Logos turn coming as expected.
and he clears out his hand using all these sloppy lab works and he draws to a uh, a nice hand filled with face shift umbra bait and switch nerve blast ring of invisibility a nocturnal maneuvers and a witch of the eye as we wait to see what fears it is going to do as he has grogan streck uh, banish subtle mall and hideaway hole in his hand so he does go back into Bravnar. And he looks like he is going to do some fighting. And he's going to clear some stuff up off the board. Get rid of one of these mothers at least, probably. And uh, try to cut his losses there. Try to make sure he maximizes his advantage with that war chest. So we see him go into shadows now, and he's starting to put some work in with the shadows. And we do see the Umbra come into play. We see the Ring of Invisibility on the Mother to try to keep his engine, his his value engine high. Um, we see a five to four, but we do see a key on Takio's side. Um, first one to a key, and he's already threatening for his second key. So that's huge. Takio is looking strong, folks. Uh, will the nine chains be too much? The chains are very much offset by these mothers, so that's part of the bidding, right? Like, even though he bid nine, having three mothers in his deck definitely is going to uh, give him a little bit of uh, slack on the uh, draw power with the, uh, the the way things are rolling. As we can see, Ugluk now taking his time, resetting his uh, Logos board, and playing another mother to try to make sure that his value keeps moving. So he does get himself to check to try to catch up, but Fierza is on a rampage over on the other side as he continues to just add pressure to the board and pushes his, his value back to six as he threatens his second key now, which is, uh, this is a, a pretty good amount of pressure. And a Scally Caper to put pressure on the mother as well. But we do see that Fears of, Fears will have to put value on either or not fears, but Ugluk will have to put value on either getting saving his mother or getting uh, getting fears off of key. So it looks like he's going with the idea of getting some value and saving his mother because he wants to keep that card advantage high as he's going to lost in the woods that Skyly Caper back. I assume he takes the Shrek away with the... Uh, with the less in the woods as well, because the last thing he needs is more uh, card disadvantage. So, yeah. And he uh, rebuilds his board again, and he draws into a bunch more stuff. So, if you, But Fierza is going to make his second key, so it's 2-1 to one now, um, but Ugluk is making a dent back into this game, as you see him quickly back up to 5 Amber on his turn as well. So um, this is a race. These guys are basically 100 miles an hour towards the finish line. They want to get this game done. So we see two dust imps introduced to the board. That's pretty huge as we uh, see that uh, that is two-thirds of a key with two dust imps. So um, it makes it hard to get rid of them and they are going to reap for value whenever they get the chance. So interesting. And then he looks like he popped a hideaway hole. So each creature has elusive this turn as well. So he's protecting his uh, board. Very well played. Now Ugluk has to make some decisions. As we wait on Ugluk to make a move, we uh, can see that in his hand he does have some tools in the shadow suite. 
but uh, he needs to get himself back two to two and then basically make this push and try to win. So the too much to protect is a pretty valuable card at this point, especially with the two dust imps. But the lights out could do some damage as well as it could definitely push back some of the uh, the threat of the dust imps and making him almost like time walk and have to go back into D's to play them again. And um, that's something that I guess we'll wait and see if that happens. But uh, this game is looking like it's going to come down to the wire and it's going to be who has that last, the last uppercut with no counter. The great way to go out in the league. So excellent. Excellent. So we see that uh, Ugluk is going to go into the Shadow's house here, and he's going to do the things that were perceived. And he draws into a Dusk Runner, which means that his too much to protect is live, as long as he has a Shadow creature to go with it, and um, that's in play. So that Umbra is uh, going to get some is, is some nasty value at this point. So here we go. We see him going back into into Dees to uh, get some value here. So he plays the Dust Imp. And the second key for Ugluk is going to come down right now. And uh, that's going to be great. As we see a wonderful key pop. So that's pretty awesome. And we'll see what happens with the... Uh, with the fun here as uh it's two to two four amber to three amber this is like somebody's gonna win by like sticking out their tongue to cross the finish line like lightning queen and uh in the cars movies <laughs> it's gonna be that close folks uh so let's see what happens Tekio with nine chains is a formidable opponent for opal <laughs> which still has three chains on it so like <laughs> But Ophal is showing its power and the, the efficiency of a mother in a in a series like this, where the chains, like, uh, mother kind of negates chains. So there's a little lesson for people that uh, these cards are pretty pretty crazy if you're, you know you're going to be bidding chains. So you, they basically negate a whole lot and make your opponent have to play high. And then if they don't draw the mothers, like, oh, my God, like, uh, they get stuck hard. But, like, um, at the same time, if they do draw their mothers, then the chains are not as, as effective. So... Um, it's an interesting dynamic in the uh, bidding world here. So. You see Ugluk contemplating how he's going to make his next move here. And he's going to go in and he's going to spike his amber count again to one that uh, is going to get him some value. And then he does have the Witch of the Eye, which he's going to be able to get a use out of um, here, like if he wants to. And uh, he's going to do that. She's going to die, but he's bringing back... Oh, so he's a uh, spiked seven amber now. Is the seven amber going to be enough? I think so, because he does not have a way to kill his own Bren the Fanatic. So we might be looking at the end of the game here, folks, as uh, I don't think Fierzo is going to have an answer for this for this play. So Ugluk getting to seven, and that's just an, that's enough to get get by. The only chance that uh, Fierza had here was if the Bren could be uh, sacrificed. And uh, that would put him at basically one. There's a the good game. There's a the concede. And that is the end of the third, fourth place game with Ugluk taking down Fierza and, pro and proving once again that he is 
the Lord of Adaptive. And uh, what a great run by Ugluk and Fierza, both uh, to make it this far and uh, make sure that you catch the final uh, game between Demet and Kiwi on our YouTube page as well. So thank you so much for this season. It's been a wonderful time bringing you all this content, and we look forward to seeing you guys again in Season 2.